So how's it going with Roger Fisher? Oh, fantastic. We uh, had a birthday party uh, this last Saturday night where I had, uh, let's see, I think it was about 80 performers. Wow. <laughs> and uh, we had some kind of big names there. We had we had Jerry Miller and Don Stevenson from Moby Grape. We had Lee Oscar. We had uh, Steve Fossen and Mike DeRozier from Heart. And they performed with this lady named Summer, S-O-M-A-R, Masek, M-A-C-E-K, who is just an amazing vocalist. And we did a couple of Heart songs. And uh, geez, we had a group called The Daily Flash. They had a hit in Seattle in, in uh, the late 60s. They were there's a really, really good band. Uh, and we had Barry Curtis uh, and Steve Peterson from the Kingsmen and other uh, former Kingsmen uh, players. Uh, Incredible and then list. A lot of a lot of uh, other local talent that's really good. And God, it was just so much fun. What one great band after another. Uh, all the bands played two songs each. And God, the people just couldn't believe it. It was in a pretty small venue, uh, 450 seat venue, so it was really intimate, and uh, people were just blown away. It was so much fun. And you know everyone out of those 80 people. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. incredible! <laughs> that's a that's a big number for one event. Yeah. Well, next year it's going to be a lot bigger. I, I predict a, a a good year here coming up for Mike and Roger Fisher. Excellent stuff. So did you participate in NAM at all this year? I was supposed to perform at the Living Legends Jam, but I got snowed in in Seattle, which was kind of good for me because it gave me time to finish the uh, music video for the new single. The new single is called Dear Friend, and it's available on iTunes and Amazon and all those places now. Uh, but the music video... It won't be available, I don't think, until to well, I don't know when it'll be available. So, <clears throat> so far, the latest with me is that uh, I've been working with my brother now since 2009 on a project that really kind of crystallized in my mind in 1995 called the One Vision Project. And what that is, it's a... Uh, four album concept package where each uh, of the four albums cover art is one quarter of a big picture mm -hmm. and uh, it's drawn from the last 40 years of writing and recording I had a really nice recording studio there for a bunch of years and uh, uh, have been you know constantly recording since uh, since I left Art in 1979. And anyway, so there's hundreds of uh, songs that are almost completely recorded. And what happened was my brother uh, started going through all these songs back in 2009, and he put together an album of uh, 14 songs that is just really, really good. When I saw how good the album was, uh, it just really hit me that man, we have to we have to treat this thing with as much respect and effort as we possibly can because it deserves to to be as good as it can be. So so far, we've released two songs. The first was a remake of Hearts Love Alive, so that's available. And the second song is Dear Friend. Name of the name of the album is All Told. Yeah, and we hope to have it out uh, by May. That's that's what we're shooting for. Yeah, songwriting. Let's see your your general catalog. How big is it right now? Like with songs that you've you've got that we haven't seen yet. That is about 120 songs, and most of them are recorded uh, almost to finish specs. Right. So then. Uh, so each of these four albums, uh, songs, are all written and, and mostly recorded. 
but what we're doing is going back and uh, uh, finishing recording, like uh, doing, adding backup vocals, adding strings, that sort of thing. And we've taken the older uh, music and upgraded it to uh, 192K sample rate, uh, which is the highest you, you can go in the digital realm right now. And uh, and then when we record and add more material to that, it's at this higher resolution. And then when we remix, everything sounds better because it's at the higher resolution. So any reverb you put on, any EQing that you do, it just makes the whole thing sound better. And my brother is notorious in the uh, audio world as being one of the best sound men in rock and roll, and uh, he's really uh, respected in the audio industry as uh, kind of an innovator, uh, although he's not real well known yet, but I think that will change uh, because of some things he's got going on right now. Uh, but yeah, so we, we really... Uh, put our all into making these recordings sound uh, as good as possible. Uh, also, there's we, we make music videos for each uh, song that we release, and the uh, music video well the, the music video for the two songs that we've released just now aren't available yet, but there is one that is available about the making of Love Alive, which is really a pretty entertaining video, I think, and that's uh, viewable on YouTube, Right. the making of Love Alive. And also, like, that Roger makes it more like a documentary to watch at the same time, so the people learn about the song? Exactly, and, uh, you know, it, this particular story of how we recorded uh, Love Alive it's really interesting. It's pretty darn entertaining. Guitar tone you carried out in this song. What, what did that come from? What type of uh, simulations or guitar? Was it just mic'd? Well, uh, the bulk of the song is acoustic guitar, and it's a really nice guitar that I picked up in Nashville a couple of years ago called a McPherson. And uh, other than that, though... Uh, well, I use a Strat a lot, so for the, the dirty guitar sound in the middle of the song, it's just a Strat with some high gain amp. And then, uh, let's see, I didn't want to just copy the song. I really wanted a fresh uh, arrangement of, of something new, and uh, I was really inspired uh to rewrite the intro of the thing, uh, which I did, and it's its own song now. And then I also wrote an outro, so uh, there are separately copywritten uh, intro and out outro to uh, to the song now. And so the only part that is uh, similar to the original is the the center of the song. So that was really fun, and I've got uh, an eight-piece group right now with uh, really good string players and hand percussionists. Going on the subject, you know, like simulations and that, did you ever experience with like um, floor processors and that create different guitar amps today? Did you see that and use that? I had an, I had an endorsement with a company uh, that specializes in guitar modeling and all that, and... I found that the one thing that it couldn't do, it could do a lot of different things, but the one thing that it couldn't do is sound like a good, clean guitar. And it, if, it, if an amp can't reproduce the sound of a nice, clean guitar, then I'm not interested. <laughs> right. So I uh, kind of uh, lost all interest in that uh, it, that way of looking at things, at least for now, uh, if somebody gets better at it, then I'm interested. But 
right now, guitar amps uh, are working better for me. I do have uh, an affiliation with Jet City Amplifiers, and they are just coming out with the uh, a Roger Fisher model. And that's really exciting because it's, uh, it's a new way of looking at guitar amps. It's a wedge, like a vocal monitor, mm-hmm. and it's designed to sit down in front of you and aim back right at your guitar. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know why it has taken so long for somebody to do this, but I was working on prototypes for this back in the 80s and even patented uh, one of my models. And uh, well, anyway, I met with Jet City Amplifiers and they heard about that idea and uh, made a prototype, brought it to NAM, and it was nominated Best of NAM. Hmm. So I was very uh, thrilled with that, and uh, we're going to be producing them soon. And uh, it's going to be, I think, the most desirable guitar amp money can buy. And this basic amp, like this Roger Fisher model, is going to carry a lot of your different tones throughout the errors, would you say? No, not not at all. Uh, it, it's just it, it, the amplifier itself is uh, uh, designed by Mike, Mike Soldano. Okay. So it's gonna it's gonna sound like a Mike Soldano. Uh, I mean, a, a Soldano amp sound. Uh, <clears throat> so if you know what that sounds like, that's what the amp sounds like. It's really pretty cool. It's, uh, so the amp is uh, designed by Soldano, so it has that sound, but I love it. It sounds really great. Uh, after meeting him and finding out what he put, puts into his amplifier designing, I have nothing but respect for, uh, for Mike and what he does with uh, guitar amps. Uh, do you foresee this amp coming out in 2012 or 2013? I think it'll be out this year. Okay. And... Uh, Boy, if, if they can implement the suggestions that I've made about uh, how to improve it, it will be the coolest guitar amp you can get. We'll have to see yeah. that in Guitar World magazine. That'd be a yeah. good ad to, to see, Roger Fisher model. Excellent. Thank you so much, Jason. All right. You have a great day.